221 days ago, I set this ambitious goal to break into Fang. And today, we officially accepted our offer to intern at Amazon this summer as a software engineering intern. And I'm actually just getting back home from one of my first days interning as a backend engineer at Autodesk. So I could officially say the job market is not cooked. In fact, learning how to code is one of the best things you could do for yourself, especially in 2025. But how do you do it? Instead of gatekeeping, in the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to share with you everything I've learned over the last six painful years of learning to code myself on my own from scratch. This is going to include everything from what coding languages you should learn and why, how do you actually learn these properly, building good quality coding projects that actually stand out on your resume, and then how to pass the interviews because you know that's literally half the process these days, it's so messed up. So let's just jump straight into it. First of all, I'm not going to tell you that there's a best language to learn. But what I am going to do is give you three of the best options to start with in 2025. And I'm going to show you everything that I've done and what I would do to learn a new coding language from scratch. And finally, I'm going to talk about the tech stack that I use to get into these positions at Amazon and Autodesk. So that way you could try to copy me if you feel like it. Let's start off with the coding languages. For me, these are the three best languages you could start off with as a beginner. Python is the easiest to learn because it's as close to English as possible. If you want to go into AI, machine learning, or any anything data related, I recommend you start with Python. The next option is JavaScript. This is ideal for web development because so many existing libraries and frameworks like React.js and stuff like that are already built on JavaScript. It is also the most in-demand coding language in 2025. Combine that by learning TypeScript and you will stand out. Now finally, I have an unpopular opinion and that is that learning Java is one of the best things you could do still in 2025. Java single-handedly got me my internships at both Autodesk and Amazon and that's because because a lot of legacy code is still written in Java. And the other thing is Spring Boot is really highly in demand, which I'm about to touch on. So if you're targeting backend roles, I highly recommend you check out Java. Okay, but how do you actually go about learning these languages now that you've picked one? What you're gonna wanna do is go to YouTube and search for the language and then coding crash course. I would then pick out any single one of these like 12 hour plus tutorials that are completely free. YouTube is arguably one of the best resources out there for anything, but especially learning how to code. Now don't get stuck in that trap that just because you watch this 12 hour boot camp, you're now a professional in that language. There is so much more to do. We're going to start by building out our first ever coding project because the only way you'll ever learn how to code is by actually coding something. So on YouTube, Find any single coding project tutorial in the language or framework that you're looking to learn. Shout out JavaScript Mastery, by the way, he's an absolute legend. Now, I'm not just feeding you some BS advice. This is actually what I've done for every single language in my tech stack. For Python, I decided to branch into some AI, and I looked into these coding projects that were basically building out your own AI model to make predictions. Mine was a Premier League match predictor. I then learned all of my React.js and Next.js stuff from these YouTube tutorials, and all of my Spring Boot knowledge came from Amigos code on YouTube. YouTube. Now, before you start picking out these coding projects, I want to tell you about the tech stack that got me into Amazon and Autodesk. I know over five different programming languages, but honestly, if I were to tell a complete beginner what to do, it would be to master one. Nobody wants to hire somebody that's good in everything, but a master in nothing. Especially because once you get good at something, you'll figure out that it's really easy to translate over your skills. For example, going from Java to Python is actually relatively straightforward. It's just some syntax differences. Anyways, getting into my tech stack, it was primarily React.js or Next.js for the front end stuff. I learned Postgres SQL for database management and AWS for cloud services. But most importantly, and what I'm gonna touch on is I learned Spring Boot. Like I mentioned before in this video, Spring Boot is highly in demand because a bunch of these big tech companies still run on old legacy code in Java. So let me show you some of the coding projects that I built and how I went about building them so you could copy me. So after learning how to code in Spring Boot, again, by watching these YouTube tutorials, shout out Amigos code, I started with something called a CRUD application. For anyone that's trying to build their own coding project from scratch for the first ever time, this is the best thing to do. It stands for create, read, update and delete. This could be anything as simple as creating your own to-do list and it's actually a good project for beginners. Now don't get me wrong, this is not good enough to get hired by any company, never mind a big tech company, especially in this messed up job market. So what I want you to do is something called project-based 
learning. If you followed along up to this point, you've probably watched a bunch of different YouTube tutorials and you are most likely stuck in something called tutorial hell. Put it simply, it's when you keep watching tutorials but you cannot code on your own without watching another tutorial. And this is that final step that separates beginners from people that are actually ready to get hired. And I get asked this question all the time, like how in the world do you fix it? Simply build out your own coding projects. The first coding project that I built was this Premier Zone Fantasy Full Stack application. That app ended up getting me one of my backend engineering internships at a company called TRC. I actually have a full tutorial on the backend for that code. I highly recommend you guys check it out. Now this is a part that a lot of people don't actually think about, but the reason why it got me hired is because the coding project was built with the exact same tech stack as the job description. So for those first internships, look at the job posting, don't just blindly apply, and go and build out coding projects with those languages if you want to stand out. Now that brings me to my next point, which is this coding project that I built, which is an exam scheduling application for McGill students. This coding project, believe it or not, actually got me my internship at Autodesk. The key reason why is because I had over a thousand people using it. So that just adds so much credibility to your coding project and it helps you stand out amongst all those other candidates that are just building YouTube tutorial coding projects. But how did I do this? I just thought of a problem that I wanted to solve for myself and I know so many other students wanted solving. And I built a very simple application to do this and then I just made a posting on LinkedIn and it took off. I even ended up collaborating with someone from Microsoft and with my own university and it was an absolute success and it all came because I started to build up my own coding projects for fun. Similarly, because I learned Spring Boot and was able to build up my own coding projects, I then built out my own startup called Empor. If you are someone that's looking to break into these fan companies, I think the one thing I want you to take away from this from a coding project perspective is to try to build startups and not coding projects. I know that sounds absolutely crazy to say, but just think about it. Best case, you ended up building a startup that's highly successful and you don't even need a job to begin with. But worst case, you have have something with the user base that's actual production level code you probably collaborated with somebody on it and that helps you land those massive internships that everybody wants now don't get me wrong getting to this point can be incredibly difficult so that brings me to the sponsor of today's video you do not need to do it alone it's this website called zero to mastery.io and it's pretty self-explanatory it takes you from complete zero to mastering what you need to actually get hired i actually know a lot of people that follow Followed the courses on zero to mastery and ended up being highly successful. It's not just for complete beginners, it's also for people looking to level up their coding skills to get to that next level like those fan companies. But what makes them so special? First of all, they have all of these different courses, whether it's in web development, learning AI through machine learning, becoming a Python developer, or even this AWS certified solution course, which remember I mentioned having AWS on my resume actually helped me get hired. What really makes them unique is that they follow what I've been preaching this entire video, which is project-based learning. And it's not just some random generic projects. Like look at the quality of these, building out your own AI career coach using an open source LLM, you know, building an AI stock analyzer and using ChatGPT, Python, and Langchain. Because of stuff like this, they're one of the best resources you could find out there. So if you want to make 2025 your year and actually learn how to code and get hired, I highly recommend you check them out right now. You do not need to go through all of this work on your own. So read the description right now. Anyways, to get back to the video, now that you've done done all of this, you've learned the coding languages, you've built the coding projects, and you can put them on your resume. Let's talk about the hardest part, which is the interview. Now, if you haven't seen one of my other videos, I highly recommend it, by the way. For my Amazon interview, I must have practiced for the interview for around 60 hours across five different days. It's absolutely brutal, but that's what it takes sometimes. This is because you need to master something called your data structures and algorithms, and that's something that a lot of these YouTube videos or boot camps or everything miss. But don't worry, let me hook you up with some of the best teachers that I use to master my data structures and algorithms to actually ace the interview and get hired. Okay, so first of all, what I want you to do is go to Abdul Bari on YouTube and please basically watch every single one of his videos. For all of these big tech coding interviews, half the time you have to do this live coding challenge and these are almost always based off of these data structures and algorithms that he teaches. The most major ones are your trees, your graphs, and then just very simple things like arrays and all that kind of stuff. But practicing these interview questions is the hardest part. So let me show you the most efficient way you could do it. It's something called 
lead code and it's basically how you're getting asked the interview questions think of it as like a word problem and you have to code up a solution in the most efficient way possible in like 20 to 30 minutes live with the recruiter learning these can be incredibly humbling and it took me almost over 250 questions to get to the point i am now today where i'm able to ace an interview don't make the same mistake i did by learning them in a random order let me put you on to these 75 questions that are the most frequently asked in any big tech interview in an order you should be learning them with video tutorials and i guarantee you if you just complete this roadmap of questions you'll be completely fine there's no point in even doing more questions than these so it's this website called neatcode.io and as you could tell there's this full roadmap filled with everything you need to learn in order so you start with your arrays and hashing and then go to two pointers your stacks your sliding window your binary search your link list and your trees and believe me i know this looks so damn intimidating because there are so many concepts that you have to memorize you might be questioning whether or not it's even worth it that's why this resource is so great because it breaks down the 75 questions like i mentioned and every single one of these questions comes coupled with an explanation they go through all the source code and stuff but the best part is this youtube video that he posts for every single one of the questions breaking down the most optimal solution now while you're doing these questions let me show you the trick that i use to actually study efficiently so first of all i was solving these questions in python and it's because like i said way at the beginning of this video python is the closest language you can get to english so it really just simplifies the entire process and what is already a really difficult thing to do now for every single question i put it in this cheat sheet after solving a question i would put down anything that i found helpful for example this sorting a list in python with dot sort and then i also made a brief note on the solution if i found the solution to be slightly difficult and needed a hint i color coded it with yellow and if i was completely lost i color coded it with blue this way when i got to preparing for an interview i knew everything that i struggled with and i already had this cheat sheet filled with a bunch of solutions for questions so it's very easy for me to refresh my knowledge and in fact for my amazon interview i ended up getting a question that was already on this cheat sheet and because i read it the night before the answer came to me during the interview anyways that's going to be all for me today as someone that's been in the exact same position as you that only just recently broke into these big tech companies i really hope that you guys have learned something from this video learning to code is one of the best things you could do for yourself and your career in 2025 don't be afraid to take that step and most importantly never be discouraged by failure you're going to get so many things wrong you're going to get so frustrated with your code and that's okay that's all part of the process. Now you can make that easier by leaving a like on this video and subscribing for more free coding tips. I'll see you guys in the next one.